welcome back to ISB Miniature Studio and in this installment of my Necron the Diorama build I'm going to show you how I paint and weather up all the pipe works that are interweaving their way around the hab block and the refinery part of my diorama. These pipes I built using very standard children's pipe toys very similar to Eric's Hobby Workshop and other YouTube videos. I added longer sections of pipe using some timber dowels and I used metal washers to create pipe connections in these long sections. Any rivets you see on the pipes were created using uh, nail art diamantes, I think they were one millimeter thick. And I'll put a link down below to a kit where you can find links to all of the items you need to build your own perfect necromunda pipes. Okay, so without further ado, let's crack on. So I've previously started with a Xenophil Prime on all of my pipes and I then give them a base coat of uh, Dark Reaper. Now, in order to get Dark Reaper to go through my airbrush and to be a bit more economic, this is my own mixture. Using the following Army Painter airbrush paints, it's one part black to one part Dark Sky to three parts Iron Wolf. This gives you a really close approximation to Dark Reaper and I say it's the perfect base coat for all of these primed metal areas. Once that airbrush prime is dry, I then come along with an Army Painter large dry brush and some Citadel Skegadon Green using a sheet of hardboard just to work the paint into my bristles on a damp brush. I do an overbrush of this Skegadon Green and then in a stippling motion, go over the entire piece, adding on texture and a bit of uh, color variance to the surface of the pipes. Once this is dry, I then come along and give all the pieces a black wash using Vallejo Game Wash. Now with this, take care when stirring it because the lubricating agent in there is quite soapy. If you shake the bottle, it will turn into a frothy mess and the, then you'll get a bubbly texture over your pieces. I would stir it with a paintbrush or an old cocktail stick and or coffee stirrer. Once I've done that, I just then give all the pieces a very liberal coat of this. I've blue tacked in some coffee stirrers and other wooden dowels into the pipes to allow me to handle these whilst I was giving them this wash so I didn't get any thumbprints on them. I leave that to dry for around about 24 hours and then I come back with a graduate mop brush. This is a very large, soft artist brush, similar to a makeup brush, and some Citadel Fenrich and Grey. I do this as a traditional dry brush, so using a sheet of kitchen towel to work the paint into the bristles. I test how much paint's on the bristles by going over the back of my Nyrite glove. When I'm happy with this, all the pieces get a very light dry brush, concentrating more on the top areas and areas that would be hit by light. I'm now going to work on the red, white and yellow sections of these pipes. Now I could use my army painter paints but that would not be very economic for the size of these pipes. So I decided to use some neutral grey instead of uniform grey, some ochre yellow and mid yellow instead of desert yellow and demonic yellow and some deep red instead of army painter dragon red. So push my army painter acrylic paints to one side and I get to work using these cheap artist acrylic paints. It's a good idea if you ever decide to paint a terrain piece in a colour that you've got in your miniature paint set to take it along with you to an art store and see if there are cheaper acrylic alternatives because as I say I probably would have used bottle after bottle painting all of these pipes up otherwise. So all of the pipes that I wish to be a pale cream colour get a stipple coat using the neutral grey acrylic paint. I work some of this into a really old artist brush using some paper towel and then stipple this over all of those pipes. Any areas that are red I do the same technique with a smaller artist brush with the deep red acrylic paint. This takes a couple of coats. The first coat was quite opaque so I waited for that to dry and then came back in again with a second coat. So instead of giving all the pieces a wash of strong tone and pallid bone like I did with my other terrain pieces, I decided to take some airbrush medium and some Liquitex burnt umber ink 
and mix this together to form my own wash. I mix this together in equal parts and then using a large brush apply this to all of the grey areas. I then take some acrylic scarlet and do a stipple overbrush to all of the deep red areas again to build up a variance in texture and to move those pieces closer to a red tone. I then use some buff titanium instead of a skeleton bone or pearl sand war paint. I apply this as a stippling overbrush to all of the areas that were given that burnt umber wash over the neutral grey. This will then create these cream coloured pipes. I then take some 4mm masking tape, this is from Modelcraft, and I start blanking out the edges of these signs where I don't want the yellow paint to overspill to the frame of these road signs. I use some of my sculpting tools to help me manoeuvre the tape into some of the harder to reach areas and gently pr press this down. I then tape off any areas of the pipe where I wish to add hazard stripes. So I do this at the very edges of these yellow areas. To base coat the areas for the yellow road signs and the hazard stripes, I mix equal parts of the yellow and ochre paints from the cheap acrylic art set until they form like this browny yellow English mustard colour as I would describe it. I stipple this over all the areas where there will be hazard stripes and road signage. I think I apply three coats of this in some areas because it's quite a translucent paint. I next take some Necromunda terrain decals and start cutting out all of the letters that I want for making my own road signs. Some of these decals I use exactly as they are and others I'm working out which letters I need from which. So you can see on the left hand side here in my notebook I've been planning that out. Uh, to apply these decals I do it in the old school fashion so I'm just using clean water uh, leaving them to soak on, on a plastic lid and then once they've soaked for around about five minutes I pick them up very carefully with a scalpel and then using a clean brush with clean water on it slide the decal into place and gently pat it down to fix it. I had quite a lot of these decals because I think it really helps to sell the piece that it is part of the Necromunda terrain. Next for any of the areas where I want hazard striping on my pipes I take a long piece of the masking tape and spiral this round. It takes a couple of goes to make sure it's evenly spaced but once put in place I've then got a very neat area to stipple on some neat black acrylic paint to form these hazard stripes. Again, I stipple this on because I'm not looking for it to be perfectly painted. I kind of want some of the yellow to show through. I want some uneven texture to really sell that this is an industrial area. It's very satisfying once this black stripe to peel it off and see those hazard stripes revealed below. I then use some army paint and moon dust and then some torn up pieces of a washing up sponge to gently stipple on some chips to these yellow areas. I go over all the decals as well again to help blend those into the metal signage. For the red areas I use a peachy tone, so this is Army Painter Barbarian Flesh. Next I give all of the piece some rust chipping. This is done first using some burnt umber and the same washing up sponge and then going back over with the lighter burnt sienna once that's dry. Trying to do this randomly all over the pieces just to add in just some general areas of rust. I then take a small brush and some army painted gun metal and go around and paint the heads of all of the rivets and all of the weld lines between pipes. I then come along with some Vallejo black red and base coat any of these valve handles made from Lego steering wheels. I then give them a sponge chip of Army Painter Dragon Red and then a final sponge chip of Army Painter Barbarian Flesh. I then use some Gorilla adhesive in a sealant gun to glue the pieces into place on my previously painted terrain 
all of the pipes were given a coat of satin varnish before fixing them in place. With the pipes now fixed to my terrain, I can finally glue both sides of the street down to the base. Again, I use the Gorilla adhesive in my ceiling gun to do this, and this connects the final two pieces of my pipework together across the street with the road signs. Now this has a gap around it, so I decided to create a welded joint here using some green stuff and a sculpting tool with a rounded edge just to create a rough welded pipe look. I then paint that up the same as the rest of the weld joints. I then use some burnt sienna and some ivory black oil paints mixed with some Sanator odorless thinners and to, to make myself an oil wash, I want this to be a semi-transparent finish. I carefully paint this onto all of the pipes and leave to dry for around half an hour before coming back with some makeup sponges, some cut up microfiber cloth and some lip gloss brushes and some clean Sanazor odorless thinners to gently remove the excess oil wash I do this in a gentle downwards motion using the different size um, sponges to remove oil from different areas. I leave this to dry for 24 hours before returning with some Green Stuff World liquid pigments in medium rust, light rust, orange rust and turquoise oxide. These are water-based pigments and I start with the medium rust and apply this in any areas where I think water would pull the most. So the tops of pipes, at the connection joints, etc. I then use a artist comb brush, which is a brush with a comb pattern cut into it, to gently pull down the wet liquid pigment and create a streaking effect. I then use the light rust to add a dot of rust to every single rivet and around all of the valve handles too. On the yellow and red areas I tend to use more of the light and orange rust because it stands out more on these colours. I also use the turquoise oxide on the yellow pipe areas as this adds a nice colour contrast with the yellow. I then use some Vallejo chrome air paint because this is nice and thin and a small layer brush to scratch out some of the text on the sign. So here, where it says Tank Point, I wanna change this to Jank Point, because that's the name of the Goliath gang here. They are the Jank Point Jackers. And I put this on as if it was painted either, could be blood or it could be red paint, but I want this to look very much like it was painted very roughly on the piece. And with that, the piece was complete. So here are the final shots.
Guys, thank you very much for joining me again. We're very close to finishing this Necromunda diorama. I think we now just have the neon signs and finishing touches to add to the base and the actual miniatures themselves to paint. So if you want to come back and see that, don't forget to maybe subscribe to the channel so that you know when that video comes out. Also, if it's not too much trouble, you could leave me a like because it makes me feel good and you never know, it might just make your day a little bit brighter too. And I really appreciate any support that you show me. Also, if you wanna see more photos of this project, go ahead and follow me over at Instagram and leave a comment below. Um, if, there's, if you have any questions, I try and respond to as many of them as possible. So until next time, all that's left to say is you are a wonderful person who is definitely destined for hobby greatness and I'm very grateful you decided to stay to the end of the video with me today. Until next time, take care.